Good morning, YouTube. I'm out here on my way out in the back of my property. Just kind of been doing some thinking, you know? Thinking about this whole Gaza thing. Um, I watched uh, a bit of the propaganda on, on the television. And they were talking about the how the Israelis had accidentally bombed a uh, a school, and there were conflicting reports about how many people had been killed. And when I say people, I'm mostly talking about kids, just children, you know, teachers, children, a baby. It was numbers like 9, and 15, and 16. And they were interviewing a, uh, an Israeli spokesperson. And, you know, the Israeli spokesperson was well-versed <laughs> in sheeple speak. And they were like, it breaks my heart too. And, but, and this is, this is the part where it just got me. So they admitted, there was an admittance that a major error had been committed. And then came the propaganda filled explanation. Basically what the Israeli spokesperson said was, it was for a good cause. Now this is concerning Hamas, uh, lobbing missiles over into Israel, so Israel has the right to defend itself. I think any nation has the right to defend itself. I, um, I'm all about defense. But when I look at this whole Israel-Gaza thing, to me, watching Israel pound the shit out of Gaza, which is basically a fucking prison, has been for, what, 40 years, 60 years? It's like watching a professional MMA fighter beat the f shit out of a 60-year-old woman who's in handcuffs who bumped into him. That's what it's like for me. Watching Gaza pound... I mean, watching Israel pound Gaza with, with the fury of God. The God of Israel. It's just pathetic, man. Of course there's going to be innocent civilian casualties, but that's the price of war. It's for a good cause. And it's heartbreaking, man. It's heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking. You know, I, I once upon a time I was a Christian, but before that I was a Catholic. I was raised a Catholic from <laughs> conception, right up until I was 17 years old, where I uh, was confirmed a Catholic. You know, so baptism, communion, and confirmation, professional Catholic, and the whole time I'd been going to church every fucking week. Because I was getting beatings. I remember I skipped once and I, my mother hunted me down, beat the shit out of me. Forced me to go. I had to go through CCD, which is Catholic indoctrination, while I was a kid in grade school. I remember I had to go away for a two week retreat to some monastery out in Vermont and hang out with the monks, those freaks in the black robes, up at some friggin' castle. But I remember I asked the, the priest when he came up to me in my confirmation and he said, congratulations. And I said, well, what does this exactly mean that I'm confirmed? He goes, well, now your church responsibilities are your responsibilities. It's all up to you now. So I said, well, does that mean I can't be forced to come here anymore? He says, absolutely. It's completely 100% up to you. And I was like, see ya. I looked right at my mother and I said, see ya. Don't you ever hit me again.
ever. Years later, I became a Christian. And not just any Christian, man. I mean, I was a troublemaking Christian. You know why I was a troublemaker? Because I had questions. I shook the foundations at this, uh, they call it the sanctuary. I shook, I found, I mean, I rocked that place. I rocked it. I was a, I was a member of that flock for about three months but I was a Christian longer than that okay I was a Christian longer than that I left that place because they didn't have any answers for me so I began studying the Christian apologetics okay because I had questions and nobody was answering my questions I went out man and I spent Caesar's coin getting all the information I could get my hands on see I'm not just your average Joe Blow here and no, and no, <laughs> and no happy indoctrinated sheep is complete without their King James. I mean, I have tons of Bible. I have tons of Bibles and uh, biblical scriptures and writings, and I mean, you name it. If I was to put it out here, man, it would more. I'd have to have three of these to fill all it. To, to, to hold all of the literature, books, scriptures, ancient, new age, everything that I've accumulated over over the uh, the years. But I dropped the whole Christian yoke when I realized what a fucking lie it was. That realization began shortly after my... Uh, the Christians like to call it salvation. You know, I went in. I went into a Christian church, pleading, begging. I'd been calling for three weeks, man. I had no license, no car, and I had uh, just finished seven months of of being sober at a fucking AA meeting, where I stood every single day staring at a plaque on the wall that said "Let go, let God." And that that for seven months, looking at that plaque saying "Let go, let God," man. It just I I. I I don't know. And then one day on the way to a uh, speaking engagement, where I was to go brag about how sober I was, thank God for AA, I drove by uh, when I was in a car, I was being driven. I went by a Christian church and I got whiplash. And I began calling three, four, five, six times a day, begging for someone to come, please get me. I needed Jesus. Three weeks. Three weeks I called and I begged. By car, they were maybe 20 minutes away. By foot, it would have taken me hours to get there. Couldn't find anybody that was in A willing to give me a ride. So one day, I just ended up walking. I said, fuck it, and I walked. And I got there, and it was a Saturday morning. And I walked in that door, and I'd been talking to this pastor, man, who was too busy to come pick me up. And I kept... And now, that in itself was a thing, man, because I kept thinking about the... What's more important, the one lost sheep or the hunt or the 99? But he was too busy, apparently. He was planning his vacation to Florida, and he had some speaking engagements. But when I walked in the door, I asked the first person I saw, where's the pastor, where's the pastor? Who'd been listening to me cry on the phone, crying, telling him I needed a new life, I needed Jeebus. And they pointed out this guy standing in the middle of a group of people, man. He was under a spotlight. It was, it was like a Hollywood production, man. Dude was standing under a spotlight, glowing. And all these people were standing around. They were like, like he was the fucking Messiah, man. And I walked up to him in tears. And I said, it's me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> I'm the one been calling, man. <laughs> Please give me Jeebus. 
and he took me aside real quick. I just saw this little look in his eye. He took me over in a corner, and he's like, oh, God is good. God, God is good. Thank you, Jesus. And then he summoned over one of his, his cronies, and he asked his friend to bring me in and put me in the special seat. So they brought me in. This friend brought me into the sanctuary, way up to the front, man. I was a second row back from the front. Because all the hardcore, the hardcore Christians were sitting right in that front row, man. And I sat there. And, and this friend is actually uh, one of the elders. Had his arm around me, and I was crying, man. I was, I was just like, thank God I finally got here. In any case... I'm watching all these fucking dipshits all around this place, man. It was horrifying. There were people kicking off their shoes, ripping open their shirts, laying on the ground, rolling on the ground. They were they were on their knees in front of this wooden cross on a wall. There was a full band playing too, man. They were playing some hardcore emotional music because that's what Christianity is. It's an emotional experience. You but you, the best time you you want to go in there and have a good time, man. Take some trip. Go in there and eat some acid. You you'll see Jesus. So the guy, the pastor, commences his little sermon. He's walking back and forth. And we're, we're now ten minutes into the real sermon because they just wasted the first half hour talking on the importance of the tithe. How important it is to give, to give unto Caesar, that which belongs to Caesar. And uh, so ten minutes into his real sermon... He stops, and, and you got to realize that there are spotlights on him. There are two mega televisions on the walls. There were 60-inch plus television speakers. There's a band in the background playing soft music, and he's roaring through this microphone. He stops. He's on the other side of the church. He turns around, and he points directly at me in front of everybody. And all of a sudden, I get a spotlight on me. And he states that the Holy Spirit just told him that I was going to get Jesus. He said, man, and this is exactly what he said. He said, man, I normally ask people or I let them come to me, but I, I'm moved. I am moved. The Spirit's moving through me and you cannot leave here without getting Jesus. As if it was some sort of divine revelation. Not the fact that I'd been calling him for three weeks, you see. It's a fucking stage act, man. It's a circus. It's a show. I looked at him and I and I thought to myself, I can't believe this, but I was going to do it anyways, man. I was going to get me some Jeebus no matter what. If I had to walk through the pits of hell, I was getting me some Jeebus. I was going to get saved. He commanded me to get up off. Get up. Get up here. Come up here. Oh, the Lord's moving through me. I can feel it. I, get up here. And I walked up there, man, and I was broken. I was crying. He placed his hand on me, man. I swear to God, he must have got an erection because the power was just coursing through him. And I received salvation that day at a non-denominational Christian church with a Episcopal. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell he was, man. I don't even know. He wasn't non-denominational. He started talking in some sort of tongue. And blah, 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 blah. Needless to say, that was the first major, huge, massive warning sign for me besides the three weeks that I'd been calling in desperation. And I began rocking that church, man. I had the elders having meetings over me, the pastor having meetings over me. They wanted to know how the hell it was I was coming up with information that would cause me to ask questions that would cause them to go and study. I had one of the elders that was there, 72 years a Christian old man Frank he man he came to my house and he's like we have never seen anything like you not that I was doing anything wrong except asking questions but the questions that I were asked that I was asking were beyond their scope of understanding you see you feeling me in any case man we'll just skip all that bullshit 
I done been saved and baptized. As a matter of fact, it, it was a week and a half later, man, that I finally was baptized by water because I had to push the issue. And I did it right there in, the, in that freaking sanctuary on a Saturday, man. I stood up. I said, hey, hey, wait a minute, man. I done been baptized yet not. But I have my salvation. But I need to get baptized, man. I need the water. So they arranged something for a pool at one of the parishioner's houses. And the funny thing is that 15 other people stood up and also wanted to be re-baptized that day because of me. So we made a pool party out of it. We were all baptized in the Holy Spirit in somebody's pool with a little bit of chlorine, hot dogs and burgers, Coca-Cola for everyone. Praise Jesus. So I left Christianity. Still call myself a Christian. There's some of you out there who know, who remember. I never believe in this fucking rapture bullshit because we were told, following the steps of Christ, the steps of Christ took him where? To his death. Straight to his death, man. So all you rapture people, you shut the fuck up. I'm sick of you, man. Fucking sellouts. Bunch of fucking sellout coward bitches. But then again, so ain't Christianity itself, man. In that Revelation 16, out of the mouth of the first beast, out of the mouth of the dragon came the first frog, second, out of the mouth of the beast came the second frog, out of the mouth of the false prophet came the third frog. There's your Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And all three, all three were given birth through the mouth of Abraham, <laughs> who was ever so willing to kill his own kid in the name of a god. But it would have been for a good cause, right? Just like Israel said. It was a good cause them babies died in that hospital. It's a good cause them babies died in that school. Even though we didn't find any weapons there, and it was actually a sanctuary, it was all for a good cause. So I decided today, in protest, which is uh, my right as a being, who is human and divine, loved and beloved of the beloved, I'm gonna do something for a good cause. You feeling me? Because this whole thing's got me sick to my stomach, man. All of it, not, not all of it. You go through the Bible and it tells you to obey your government. And if you don't obey your government, then you are against God. That to me equals god vern -ment. So the Bible to me is nothing else but government propaganda. That's all it is. Obey your government. If you don't obey your government, then you are against God because God places all governments in charge. Right there in the Bible, man. And not just once or twice. So, we're going to have ourselves a little Bible burning for Gaza. Now, this is not in support of Hamas. Because them motherfuckers are killing babies too. I hold no religion. Because religion is nothing but a fucking faith. It's a belief. A belief is a lie, man. You don't ever believe nothing. Believe nothing. Question everything. And only accept the knowing, the truth. The truth. This says something there in Revelations about that. Doesn't that say that right there in uh, Revelation? Revelation 2, right? We'll go up here and we'll just take a quick peek before I start fucking this book up. Revelation 2, I, I got all kinds of shit in here, man. This is some heavy duty shit I got. Revelations 22. No, we don't want to do that. We're going to go into Revelation 2. Come on, man. Don't give me a hard time. Revelation 3. Letters to the seven churches. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven gold lamps. It says, I know your works, your labor, and your endurance that you cannot tolerate evil. You see? 
You have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and you have found them to be liars. You see what I'm saying? You also possess endurance and have tolerated many things because of my name and have not grown weary. But I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then how you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Otherwise I will come to you and remove your lamp stamps from its place. You want to know what your true love is? Your first love, your true love? It's the truth, man. You know what Jesus said? The truth shall make you free. See, that's your first love. Because all truth is of the Most High. All truth is of the Most High. You, you feeling me? Are you feeling me? Not the precepts and traditions of men. Not the precepts and traditions of men. As a matter of fact, most of this shit here, nothing but sex. It's all about sex. All about sex. Sex. 1 Corinthians 15, man. That's talking about sex. That's talking about sex. I'm trying to tell you something. It's talking about sex. 1 Corinthians 15. As a matter of fact, I'll put that in the description box for some of you who just don't know what the fuck I'm talking about but we're gonna do this today and before I start I tell you what oh god of the book I challenge you today why don't we make a snuff film why don't we make a snuff film once you come down here god of this book I don't know which one because there's so many gods in the book it's, what's that Psalm 82 God sits in the assembly of the gods any case, all you bitches come down here and, and, and fuck with me while I'm doing this. Why don't we make a snuff film? Put, put out my light. Put out my candle. Let's do this. Why don't we do this? Because I'm just sick and tired of this whole thing, man. All you fucking Christians and Catholics. Israelis. Muslims. All you fucking religions, man. Just fuck off. I'll put this down for a second. Because I gotta get busy. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. That's me. And I'm cutting open the Bible. That's me. It's cr crinkling up the Bible. I hope you Christians are having little orgasms in your pants, man. Hoping that I'm going to burn. My soul is going to be taken away. My soul is going to burn. Somebody told me that. They said it's my own soul that I'm putting into damnation if I would do this. My soul. My soul. <clears throat> My soul. My soul's gonna burn. Let's hope the fuck so, man. I hope so. Get this party started. Bibles for Gaza. <clears throat> Bibles for Gaza. Got my little holy candle up there in the center. Is my sacred circle. I haven't put a little bit of salt around there in case the in case the evil book demon comes out and tries to get me. Burning in hell today, man. 
burning in hell today. Bibles for guys. Not for the religious bullshit, but for them little kids, man. Suffer not the children. And whoever hurts one of my little ones. Better off they had a millstone around their neck. Better off they weren't even born. Now what Jesus said. Isn't that what Jesus said? Isn't that what Jesus said? Better off they weren't even born. Bibles for Gaza. Ooh, we got the rain. The rain's coming. The Bible God's getting uppity. Here we go. There's one. Come on now, I got five gallons of gasoline. This is going up no matter what. It's going up no matter what. See, I ask questions. I don't settle for that just believe shit because believe is nothing but hope in a vain imagining. That's what believe is. That's what faith is. To hope in a vain imagining. That's what it is. There we go. Let's release the demon. Let's release the demon. I'm gonna release that demon. I'm gonna release that demon. And set him free. Lord is my light and salvation, uh-huh. Where was he when them kids were getting killed? Huh? Where was he? Where were you, God? Almighty God of Israel. Oh, that's right. You were on the trigger. I forgot. You pulling the trigger. You pulling the trigger. That's something else. All my little notes. Years worth of notes. Years of study material. All gone. Looks like I might have to build an ark, man. We got a pour of rain coming down. That's all right. We're going to fight fire with fire. Fire with fire. Fire with fire, man. I'm gonna use the spirits, the higher laws, the counter the lower laws. Yeah, man. Oh, here's his merry old King James. Yep. 
There he is. Let's see if it, King James rolls over in his grave. Let's see. Let's see. The flock of people is pathetic with your religion and your beliefs and your faith in a belief which is a vain imagining. Pathetic. All of it. Disgusting. Pathetic. Every child whose life is lost is on you as you Christians sit there watching this in joyful glee waiting for the moment when they're all going to summon everyone to Armageddon and the battle of God will commence. And then you can get raptured right before it while the shit's hitting the fan. You're up there toasting marshmallows with Jeebus. <sighs> Fucking pathetic. Obey your God. Obey your government. Obey your god -verment. That's what it says in the Bible. And if you rebel against God, if you rebel against the government, you're rebelling against God. Submit yourself to authority, or you're rebelling against God. Get on your knees. Stay on your knees. Turn the other cheek. You let them take all from you, everything. You turn the other cheek because it's for God, it's for a good cause. It's all for a good cause, man. Because that's what God needs, right? He needs your money. He needs your property. He needs your little boy's virgin ass. Right? Ain't that what the priests try to tell them boys? I reject it all. In the name of truth. And that's what Christ means. Truth. And anti-Christ means anti-truth. Nothing more. Yep. Pouring rain, man. Big time. Yet we burn. King James right up on top where he liked to be. Now, King James was gay. He liked to be on top. I suppose he might have liked being on the bottom, too. That's it, man. I'm done. I'm disgusted. Stop killing kids, man. I don't care. There is no good cause. Peace out. <laughs> it poured here, man. It downpoured like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> the God of this world was not too happy. But as you can see, as you can clearly see, the wrath of truth prevails. You see? The cleansing fire of the living word of truth doth prevail. I give this stuff a little kick here. Oh keep you keep you keep you in the depths of hell here. Get you cooking good, man. Hell. Yeah, hell. So as you can see, truth prevails. As it has been, shall be, and always forever more. Praise Jeebus.